let's start to think about different types of freely movable joints. And I guess the first thing I want to sort of cross-reference with you is that joints are articulate. Let me choose a different colour. I'm not happy with that colour. Uh, let's go for something a bit pinky. How's this? Joints are articulations. I'm not, I'm not sure what the word articulation means to you, but for me, in my mind, what I'm referring to with this word articulation here is that they are the coming together of bones and also that at that articulation there is movement. And I'm going to say where two or more bones meet. Two or more bones meet. And of course we've got loads of examples of this in the human body, but we're interested in the freely movable ones, or we might refer to them as the synovial joints. Now, I am not going to go over all types of synovial joint here with you, but I'm going to go over instead two. There's actually five or six different uh, different types, but I'm going to go over two types with you today, okay? So we're going to branch off one here in sort of a, like a minty green, and we'll branch one off here with like a creamy yellow, okay? So let's do the minty green one first. Over here, I want to talk to you about hinge joints. And we've got some images that are going to help us with this. I really want you to be aware of three hinge joints. I'm not saying they are the only hinge joints. They are the three I want you to be aware of for today. One, two, three, okay? So the first of these is the knee. And you're going to say, well, okay, I know that, James. Come on, it's, get a grip. It's, it's not difficult. I agree. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. You get the idea. We all know where it is, right? The point I want to make is what are the articulating bones that meet at that joint. And I'd like to uh, make you aware of three. The first one is the femur. Okay, here we see the femur bone coming to join at the knee. Here we see the femur bone coming to join at the knee. So the femur articulates at the knee. Secondly, the tibia articulates at the knee. Okay, so here we've got the tibia here coming to articulate at the knee. And the final bone is we have the patella. Now I just want you to be a little bit careful with the patella. The patella bone actually sits above the knee joint itself, okay? But we've got those bones there. Secondly, let's think about the lower body again, and let's focus on the ankle, okay? Now the ankle this time, I'll, I'll focus on this person's ankle. We've got the tibia coming down here. So let's go there first, tibia. And I've kind of, it's going to be hard for me to draw it because it's sort of two dimensions here. But we've also got a second bone in there called the fibula. Okay, so I'm going to refer to the fibula that articulates at the ankle. And then finally, guys, we have a bone which is the upper bone of the foot. This person's got it strapped, but it would be just here, okay? And this bone here is what we refer to as the talus. Notice one L there, the talus bone. And those are the bones that articulate the, at the ankle. Finally, for our hinge joints at least, of course, we are interested in our elbow. We know where it is. Here it is. Here it is, we've got flexion in this case, relative extension in this case. But here we get the joining of the humerus. Okay, re remind yourself that the humerus is the upper arm bone articulating at the elbow. And then the two lower arm bones, or forearm bones, we have the radius. And you, it's important we also include the ulna. Now, it's really important we're aware of these two bones. I don't want to get into too heavy a detail here, but the the bicep, obviously the upper arm, which causes elbow flexion, that actually inserts onto the radius, whereas the tricep inserts onto the ulna. So both are really important to this particular joint because both are involved in movement at the elbow, okay? Now, we mentioned our kind of creamy colored here. We're gonna focus on these ones with ball and socket joints. So ball and socket joints. And I repeat again, these are not the only types of synovial joints, the ones we're gonna look at here. And I'm gonna make you aware of two ball and socket joints within this tutorial. I'm sure you know what they are, but Let's just go over them. The first one is the shoulder. Again, you you know, nothing surprising here. Shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Okay, we get the idea, shoulder over here. So what are we talking about with the shoulder? We're talking about the meeting of the scapula. That's the bone which forms the shoulder blade itself, but it's actually the socket part of the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. It's the opening. Um, and we've also got the, the uh, bone of the upper arm, which we've looked at already being the humerus. So now we've got almost like the complete picture for the humerus, right? It um, articulates at the elbow, it articulates at the shoulder. Useful. Well, we're gonna get a similar thing now at the hip with the femur, okay? At the hip, again, we know where it is, it's here. It's here, it's here, okay? So what have we got here at the hip? 
At the hip, we get the articulation of the pelvic bone or the pelvis. You can say ilium as well, but let's just keep it a pelvis for today. And that articulates or joins with the femur. Okay, the femur obviously being the upper uh, leg bone. And we've got the femur, again, we've got the full story of the femur now, um, connecting and articulating the knee, and again, above at the hip. These are articulating bones. These are the types of freely movable uh, joints you should be aware of. Just be aware there are other synovial joints, but we're not going to look at them in this particular experience.